Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to play... What am I going to play? Uh, let me just say good luck. I'm gonna play d4, but I'm gonna try to play something different. Uh, okay, let's go c4 and let's see what happens. Oh, okay. I guess it's either the Benoni or the Benko. I'm just going to accept the Benko completely. Uh, I think Bishop a6 is... Not Bishop a6? Can I not just go e4? Usually on knight c3 they go Bishop a6 so that on e4 they can go Bishop f1. Maybe there's a line, I don't know. If I go e4, do they go Queen a5? e4, queen, a5, bishop, d2. Is there a problem with that? Bishop, a6, bishop, a6, I'm guessing knight, a6. I don't think there's a problem with that. Still, I'm expecting queen, a5. Not queen, a5, okay. Okay, so I'm guessing black is waiting for me to move my bishop before they recapture Okay, uh, can I go d6? d6 seems very tempting. I don't think if it's... I don't think it's good enough, but... After d6, ed6... Yeah, I don't really have anything. I should just play knight f3. It's very weird not to have d6 played in a Benko or a Benoni. <clears throat> if I go d6, ed6, queen d6, I'm threatening queen c5. Uh, they could go queen b6 or queen a5 and on queen a5 I still have to go bishop d2 yeah, that feels really loose I mean I want to go d6 but maybe it's too risky maybe I need to develop first I don't know maybe this is just a wasted opportunity maybe I can even go e5 maybe I don't even have to go d6 if I go e5 the knight e8 seems pretty forced, I think. Then I could go f4 straight away. Okay, not not having played d6 leaves me wasting a lot of time. If I go e5, knight e8. It does misplace the knight, but then black is going to go d6 and I have to defend my pawn. So I don't really like e5. I feel like that's overextending. Coming back to d6, I think ed6 is forced. Or maybe it's not. Ah, okay, I'm just gonna go knight f3. I don't want to mess up the game before it started. Okay, he, he doesn't even play d6 now. This is the position I was expecting, but without him uh, castling. Okay, at least now I got to... Okay, preventing d6. I'm, I'm guessing queen e2 is normal now. Because this does prevent me from castling. Why wouldn't I play queen e2 here? I'm just gonna go queen e2 because that's what I was intending to, to, to play. And without the queens on the board, if, if they take, my king is actually perfect on e2. Preparing to defend e4. I really wonder if d6 worked there. I... Okay, I cannot castle. I need to leave my king uh, to, to defend my queen, or I have to take. Okay. Uh... I guess I'm going to take, because I... I want to 
do stuff with my king. Uh, they want to go knight b4, I think. Knight b4 is annoying. Uh, so I think I'll just go king e2. So that on knight b4 I can go a3. Chase the knight away. And I want to move my f3 knight out of the way and I want to play f3. Without the queens on the board, I don't, don't feel as threatened in this Benko. I, I don't know about this line. Maybe it's a line, but... Um, I mean, I know it is because I've played against it before, but I'm not sure how much of it is theory. I know that people play it. And I don't know what the ideas are. And I still wonder if I could have played d6 earlier, simply disrupting black's position completely. If they go rook fb8, rook hb1 is kind of risky because they could go knight b4. So I think I'm going to go b3. Even though that may seem risky, but I want to defend my b pawn. <coughs> or, yeah. I want to be able to move my b pawn. And I may also consider rook ab1. Rook a b1 seems nice. Rook a b1. Because b3 does leave the diagonal kind of open. Rook a b1. Rook a b1. Okay, I'm gonna go rook a b1. Because I don't want to be running into knight b4, knight c2. I actually want my rook on the c-file, my h-rook, I want it on the c-file. So that I can safely play knight e1, and then f3, and then knight d3. And maybe even b3 next, but... I would also like to get my knight into c4, so I'm thinking... Uh, rook hc1, knight e1, knight c2, knight e3, knight c4, with f3 so that my knight on c4 is covering a ton of squares and rook b4 is always risky because of discoveries with my c3 knight I mean, if, if he tries to double on the b-file, I can simply go b3 and, and knight a4. I don't think there's a problem with that, because I can... I mean, my, my knight is pretty stable. <coughs> it's not as if I have to take on c4 after c4. But before that, I need to do something about my e-pawn. And that something cannot be... King king e3 because of knight g4 and because of bishop h6 so i need a couple of moves i need rook hc1 knight e1 f3 and then i i feel safe i could be wrong maybe there's a better setup 
I actually don't want my king on d3 because again they could play c4 with tempo and then knight c5 and even though that gives up a pawn that's a very thematic sacrifice in the in the Benko and in the Benoni which gives the knight the best square on the board which is why I wanted to play b3 at some point but Okay, so what does black do? If he doesn't double on the b-file, what's the plan? Knight b4 doesn't do much, I can just go a3, I think, because the knight has to go back. Uh, if, for example, rook b7, then rook hc1, rook a b8, rook uh, c2. And my c3 knight is sufficiently defended, so I don't have to worry but then they could go knight b4, then I have to go rook c1, and it's a repetition. That I don't like. So if they try doubling rooks, I need a, a better idea. I could actually wait and go... Uh, I could go, uh, for example, rook b7, rook h to c1. No, 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 and I wanted to say rook a b8, knight a4, but then knight e4. Ah. Oh. It doesn't work. So what can I do? Do I have to play b3? Maybe I have to play b3. So rook b7, rook h c1, for example. Rook a b8, b3. If c4, uh, I have to take it, and that's fine because my knight still defends uh, on b1. So I can do that. I could also on rook b7 try going a4, but then I think rook b3 and on knight b5 simply knight b4 and I should resign. Seems positionally completely busted and also loses material on both sides. So I don't think I can do something like that. I don't really want to play a move like knight d1 because it loses my e-pawn. Okay, h6 doesn't do anything. I'm really happy to see that. h6 doesn't do anything. I want to move my f3 knight anyway. Okay, I... Okay, I'm just going to continue with my plan. I wonder what I would have done on, on this. It's a pretty simple plan. I don't know what h6 does. I have no idea what it does. Prevents knight g5. Prepares g5. But I don't want to play knight g5. I don't see a point to knight g5. And I don't know what g5 does. So h6 actually creates a weakness for my bishop to target. Okay. Why couldn't they have done that before? I don't understand. Okay, e5 is under pressure. And I cannot defend it defend it once more but for the moment playing knight e5 actually loses a pawn uh, because knight e5 knight e5 bishop e5 bishop h6 they cannot go bishop h2 because they go g3 okay uh, but that still means that i cannot move my f3 knight or at least easily <coughs> I mean, I could consider playing knight e1 anyway. Uh, but this knight is going to come to c4. And I don't really want to play b3, unless I have to. So I should keep my... my knight on f3. At least now that my rook is on the c-file, I'm not that afraid of c4.
But I could consider b3 now, b3 and knight a4 now. And if knight before I, I take it. Now that there's no knight on f6, so there's no pressure on e4, I actually don't have to move my knight away and play f3. So if I go b3 and I go c4, uh, I take it. And that seems okay. And if I go b3 and I don't go c4 and I go knight a4, then c4 actually loses a pawn to rook c4. You can also go a4 and knight b5 and then b3. If I go b3 and I go knight b4, what do I do? Hmm. I don't like that. So I think maybe I could go knight a4 immediately. Knight a4, if knight b4, I have to take it. And then they don't take on b4, they take on a4, and then I lose my a pawn. So that's not good. Maybe I should bring my king closer to the b-pawn, but if I ever go, go king c2, they have knight b4. I actually don't have that many useful moves. This is very annoying. I could try going... I could try going king d3, but then again, they have knight b4. Hmm. And c4 is coming. Which is exactly why I don't want to play a3. Maybe I could just go bishop f4 and then knight d2 for knight c4. It doesn't seem like a bad plan. But then they can go g5, and they don't really want to move my bishop that far away. So maybe I can start h4, <coughs> and then bishop f4, because I don't see a threat. There's no threat. So I'm going to go h4, and the idea is bishop f4 and then knight d2. For the moment my bishop covers uh, knight e5. And my knight is coming into c4. That's what I would like to do. I would like my knight to cover e5 from the other side so that I can cover e5 with f4. But if I had gone bishop f4 immediately, then g5 and bishop e3 and g4 actually vacates the e5 square and misplaces my bishop. I know that maybe there's absolutely no sane logic to that, but this did solve my issues. I don't know, I still think the plan with rook b7 makes sense for black. I 
Maybe I can also just grab some space with, with g4, g5, but that gets rid of the weakness on h6. Wow, c4, okay. So there's a knight coming to c5 uh, that I can see. Uh, I still lose my b3 pawn if I go knight a4. I can see that as well. Uh, Do I want to trade off my bishop for one of the knights? I'm pretty sure I do. But I think bishop e3 actually works. Bishop e3, knight c5 takes. Knight c5, knight fd2. That seems pretty fine to me. Takes, takes. Okay, I'm just going to do this because I don't see why not. I didn't think c5 was possible. I think it eventually loses the pawn. But I could be wrong. I mean. So I, I'm, I'm going to go knight d2. And then, since I'm covering the b3 square, I'm going to be threatening a4 and knight b5. Where I can defend my a pawn. Well, actually, no. I still have to get rid of the bishop. Okay, maybe I don't win the c4 pawn without consequences, because I cannot cover that easily, but it's still a weakness. Okay, I take once. They take, I go knight d2. And now my pawn is covered, so I have to play f3 and simply grab the pawn. Rook b4 seems very risky. And I actually don't mind trading my a pawn if they're going to give up the bishop. I, I don't think bishop c3 should be played. It seems to leave the position very weak. Wow, okay. Okay. Okay, so I have to defend first. So I'm just gonna defend the pawn first. I think that's okay. And then I'm gonna go f3 and take on c4. I think that should be a favorable trade because I'm just left with the passed pawn on the b file. Ah, but they have c3. I missed c3. Ah, uh, so I do have to trade everything. Yeah, I didn't see c3. Because my rook is pinned. Okay. So this actually equalizes completely. I just gave the material back and it's that even if they go c3. Ah. Uh. Yeah, just c3. Why not? What's the problem? Because you have to take with the rook, and then I take on b2. Wait, I'm actually much worse. No, I'm not much worse, because I get to trade a pair of rooks. But still, it's even. <laughs> no, no, I, I imagine that I could trade a pair of rooks. <clears throat>
I think C3 is the only move that equalizes straight away. I okay. Now C3 actually doesn't equalize because both rooks are hanging. Wait, on yeah, okay. On, on C3, the B8 rook was hanging as well. So I was wrong. Okay, so I'm just gonna go F3 and threaten to take knight C4. In the C3, I think I still have to take with the rook. What? Okay. Threatening. Threatening knight d4 check. If I go knight takes c4. And if I go rook c4, then knight d2. Hmm. Well, knight d2 actually. Okay, I cannot do that. <sighs> so I'm guessing I have to play something like King D3, because I have to unpin and then they take. Okay, I'm gonna play king e3. I simply have to unpin and, and stop the threat of knight d4. Now I think knight d2 could be the only move, but... <coughs> I have to take with the king, and my idea is king c3 at some point, with king d4 to follow, if, if I can do that. I don't know which pawn is less safe. I also don't know if either of us winning the, the other pawn is going to be enough to win. I want to say for him it may be, because his pawn is already on c4. But again, I, I don't think... Either of us could win those pawns. I have to take with the king so that I can play king c3. And now I think I'm threatening king c3, king d4. And yeah, that doesn't threaten anything, that's just a pawn trade. I don't know. I think this could be just equal, but I will see. Okay, once a pawn trade. Can I avoid the pawn trade? He's actually his pawn is actually better than mine. But I have more space. I think I have to accept because I, I cannot leave his his rook on, on my on my third rank. Which means I have to trade all the rooks. Which means my king is slightly better, so I could be winning the pawn endgame. So I'm saying, uh, I'm thinking that in a rook endgame I have no chance, but in a king and pawn endgame my king is slightly better, so. If they trade, my king is once two squares closer to his pawns, but that's not enough probably, or definitely. But still, I couldn't give up my g2 pawn, so it's not as if I had a choice. But we will see, I will try to outmaneuver him anyway. With a minute 50 on the clock.
it's easy to make mistakes in opponent game i mean i just i'm gonna go back a bit so here i underestimated bishop c3 i thought that here yeah here i didn't see c3 and on c3 takes rook takes rook takes uh And it's actually okay. I'm not sure. We're gonna have a look at it after the game. He goes to g7. It's very strange. Why would he go to g7? Because I want to go target the e7 pawn. And if the e7 pawn moves, I want to target the d6 pawn. So I'll just start moving towards those. I think he should have gone this way. Because now I'm one square closer. I think his defense was c7, d7. I could be better now, but the, I'm not sure. Because if I get my king to d7, it should be a winning endgame for me. I have a bit more space, so any pawn breaks are going to be in my favor. So for example, if I manage to play f4 and d5 and take twice on d6, or if they take, I have a passed pawn. So I think king f8, I think he should play king f8 now, actually. Because if he goes to f6, king e5 does nothing, because my pawn is three squares away from queening and his is five. So even if he takes my g2, f3, e4 and d5 pawns, if I take e7 and d6, I win. I think the same applies here. So let's say king c4, fe, fe, <coughs> uh, king f6, king b5, king e5, king c6, I lose. Okay. So I cannot lose both pawns. But I can block his king completely by taking and playing f f4 so e takes f5 g takes f5 f4 he has to play king g6 threatening king h5 and i can then simply go g3 and is that enough to win I don't think so. If I could get two moves in and play both f4 and h5, then it would be easily winning, but if I go ef, gf, h5, then he goes f4, and f4 is forced. And then I go king d4, they go king f6. And I go king e4, and then they go king g5. Okay, so that's not good. Whatever happens, my d5 pawn is holding two of his, unless he can play 
e6 without any consequences. So ef5, gf5, h5. If king f6, I play f4 and win. So I think so. And if f4, that's not that clear. Okay, I'm gonna go king d4 because I'm too afraid to to trade off the pawns there. And if, if they go king f6, I could consider f4, threatening e5, and then forcing him to take. So f4, f e4, king e4, e6 takes, king takes. Seems okay. Should be equal. And if they don't take, then it should be better. Okay, I'm gonna go f4. I think taking is pretty much forced, because if I play e5, then I do have a very strong passport. <coughs> Wow. Isn't this winning for me? I think this is just a win. Yeah, this is... This has to be winning. Uh, do I have to prevent f4? I don't think so. Do I have to prevent f4? Do I have to prevent f4? I'm going to prevent f4. I don't see why I would allow counterplay. I'm not in a rush. He said that's embarrassing, GG. I, I'm sorry, I mean, he had a completely equal game. Uh, I'm just going to say sorry.
yeah, I, I, if I were him, I'd be very upset. Uh, but, I mean, he, he played the whole game, I'm going to say, better than me and then the pawn in the game he just played very poorly but he had no time on the clock so i'm 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 the same if it were the other way around i'd have messed it up too i'm guessing let's let's have a look at uh, the game someone says in the chat stepan i was wondering if you know mio perunovic personally mio perunovic is a serbian international master whom i've never met uh i only know one serbian guy and that's milan uh, he's a FIDE master, he's my friend, but I, I think there are like 50 IMs in Serbia, so it's very hard to know know them by name. I don't even know the creation ones, so... Okay, uh, Benko. So let's see about this idea of not playing bishop a6. Knight c3, bishop g7. Okay, so d6 is not played here. e4... Ah, no, 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 here, here. We were thinking d6 here, or e5 here. So e5 is a move that's played, but I, I, I don't like e5. Let's have a look at that. And you don't have to play f4. Uh, uh, okay, I would never do this. And then d6. What does the engine say on d6? Takes. Okay, and black is better. Okay, so we learn something every day. Okay, knight f3, queen a5, bishop d2, bishop a6, bishop takes... Okay, bishop e2 is the main move, that makes way more sense. But bishop a6 is also good, queen e2 is good. d6 is a move, but e6 is more common. Taking, okay, taking is bad. So what do I do if I don't take? The move is rook b1 or a4. Should be equal. Hmm. So a4 knight b7. Okay, and the idea is knight b5. Okay, queen a6 should be a big mistake. Yeah, and h6 is weird. Let's see about rook b7. I was going to play rook hc1, and then if rook a b8, b3 should be okay. Okay, so just b3. They played h6 here, and h4 is a mistake. g3 doesn't do anything, so I, I don't think I ever would have found g3. h3, I think, also doesn't do anything. Bishop e3 does something, and I did it a move later. So maybe that made more sense. c4 is a mistake. And I should go knight d1? And after knight c5, then what? Ah, then rook c4, okay. And if they go... Yeah, and they, they cannot defend the pawn anymore. Ah, okay. So this is the trade I should have gone for. And I should be slightly better. Okay. But this is all pretty equal. Let's just have a look at c3 here. Which rook does he take? I'm guessing this one takes and here. Yeah, I, I don't know. Black seems more active. Okay, rook b4. I should have taken immediately, but I didn't want to take. Okay, on f3. Everything seems to be equal. Now... Yeah, I think... Wait, King G7 is okay? F5. Okay, here's what I was worried about. If I take, take. If I could get in two moves, for example, H5 and the King moves and I go F4. Okay, I thought I was winning this. But H5 actually loses after F4, which I did see. Because the King just has a way in. So I couldn't see what to do. So King D4 is a normal move. And then F4 and I think he had to take. I think taking was the simplest, because I don't get a passed pawn. But not taking... What did he do? He played h5. Yeah, this is just over. I don't understand why he wouldn't take. I don't know if g3 was necessary, but I'm winning anyway. There's no way not to win this position. It's not even about the opposition. I, I have as many moves as I want. 
You see, he can never, never follow me to the corner because they just go e6. Okay, let me show you this. So let's say we get position like this, and I cannot improve my king. I can just go here, and if he goes here, I can just come in. And if he follows me to the corner, for example, then I just go e6 and and then do this. But yeah, uh, allowing this is is not good. Okay. I had two inaccuracies, he had three inaccuracies, wow, okay. I didn't think I played such a good game, but I played a good game. Thank you for watching, hope you got something from the video, stay tuned for more chess. I, I really enjoy, uh, enjoy it when I beat the Benko, which doesn't happen often. Bye-bye.